colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the HKRAS Distinguished Lecture Series on Electronics and Photonics. Today, I'm very pleased to introduce to you Professor Ding Ping Cha, who will give us a lecture on meta devices from sensing and imaging to quantum optical chip. Professor Ding Ping Cha is currently Chair Professor of the Department of Electrical Engineering at CDU. He is the elected fellow of 12 professional societies. He is an author and co author of over 330 SCI papers, 65 book chapters and content papers, and 39 technical reports and articles. He has been granted 68 patents in the USA, Japan, Canada, Germany for 45 innovations. 20 of his patents have been licensed to five different companies. He has been invited, he has been an invited speaker for international conferences or symposiums for more um, more than 300 times. He received more than 40 prestigious recognitions and awards, including global highly cited research from Web of Science Group, uh, China's top 10 optical breakthroughs in 2020 and 2018. Multi award from the International Society for Optics and Photonics. He was editor of the Journal of Progress in Quantum Electronics, associate editor of the Journal of Library Technology. He currently serves as editor of Light, Advanced Manufacturing, and uh, Photonics Insights. He's also a member of the editorial board of several research journals, including. APL Photonics, ACS Photonics, Advanced Optical Materials, Nano Letters, Physical Review Applied, Optics Communications, Small Methods, Advanced Quantum Technologies, uh, Opto Electronic Advances, uh, Postmonics, post opti Opto Electronic Letters, and Frontiers of Opto Electronics. Um, let's, without further ado, let's welcome Professor Chai. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dian. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, good afternoon. Many really thanks for the kind invitation and arrangement of my talk at Hong Kong Institute for Advanced Study, HKIAS today. It is my honor and pleasure to present my talk, Meta Devices from Sensing and Imaging to Quantum Optic Chip. I will report the current focus of our research on the development of high dimensional optic meta devices especially the acromatic beta lens array and their applications in live field sensing, imaging, and the quantum optics. Uh, because the title of this talk is Beta Devices, quite a few people ask me about the relationship between the beta device and the beta works. I will explain my comments and the views on this question at the end of this talk. Uh, first, I would like to thank my former students and the current graduate students for their great efforts of the results shown and report in this talk. Uh, uh, they, they all had a very good uh, position after receiving the PhD degree uh, uh, and uh, they served uh, research uh, uh, scientists at uh, Harvard University, uh, EPFL in uh, Lausanne, and also VK uh, 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 in Japan, and uh, Caltech in California, and uh, University of Southampton, and also TSMC. 
and also uh, my fellow student uh, in the CTU. Uh, and also our research collaborations around the world. Uh, there are many uh, good friends uh, from Nigeria University, Thai University, and also uh, National Singapore University, National uh, Technological University in Singapore, Hokkaido University, Wiki Japan University of Southampton, Harvey Institute of Technology in Shenzhen, and University of Science and Technology of China, Rice University, Caltech, uh, University of Massachusetts, Boston, and the Academic Zenica and the National Taiwan University. This is the outline of my talk. I will first give a brief introduction of beta materials, beta surfaces, and the sum of our previous study of beta devices and their applications. I will show you the reasons for developing the beta lens and the economic beta lens. I will provide you the general design principle of uh, beta lens. Uh, I will report how to use our mobile lens to make a convenient beta lens for refraction. Similarly, I will show you how to make our transmission type a convenient beta lens and beta lens array for uh, biofield sensing, imaging, and uh, quantum optics. Finally, I will uh, summarize my talk with the uh, prospect of uh, beta devices. What is beta material, beta surfaces, and beta devices? Uh, material is made of uh, molecule and atoms. In crystal, the uh, atoms are arranged in a periodic fashion with that is constant, less than one. This is much smaller than the wavelength of the light. Therefore, the light experience an effective homogeneous material normally. For many kind of materials, it's made of artificial atom and molecule. The artificial structure is on a sub wavelength sphere with a lattice constant around tens of the working wavelengths. By tuning the feature, size, and the geometry of the artificial structure of metal material, normal and the extraordinary electromagnetic phenomenon can be found, which cannot be found in nature, such as negative refraction and the left handed material. Professor Vizzarago calculate and predict the left-handed material are uh, negative uh, refraction with negative permeability and uh, permittivity in 1967. Dennis Smith and uh, John Pantry, they published the first microwave uh, experimental results uh, from 8 to 12 gigahertz experimental results of the left-handed material uh, and the negative refraction phenomenon in 2001 and 2004. We made the colloid beta material and uh, report the first microwave colloid response in uh, 2010. Subsequently, we experimentally demonstrated the general structure colloidal beta material uh, with the colloidal dipole and the anapole uh, in the Arctic wavelength region. So uh, a lot of people uh, in the past few years keep asking me when will the beta material commercial product be available in uh, the store. I have also received letter from the Nobel Prize Physics Committee two times for soliciting me uh, for soliciting my comments and views on this highly application of metal material issue. When will the metal material or metal devices be commercially available in our daily life? It is a very good question and a great challenge as well. I hope 
uh, you can find out the answers to this question in my talk today. One of the simple answers is to consider the beta surface, a single layer of beta material. In 2011, uh, Dr. Yunnan Fang, uh, in his science paper, he showed the beta material with a layer antenna uh, used to demonstrate the wave front uh, of the propagating wave can be fully controlled. Uh, eight different narrow antenna can generate eight different phase to form a new wave front. Uh, it means that the arbitrary wave front can be generated by the design of artificial narrow antenna as the interface. Of course, the size of the period of the narrow antenna are small compared to the working with this here. Uh, in the textbook, Huygens, the mayor principle say that uh, any point to which a luminous disturbance reach at the interface will become a source of a spherical wave here, and the sum of this uh, secondary wave determines the form of the wave at any subsequent time. The same law is based on this simple principle for a perfectly flat interface. That is, for the normal incident uh, case, the generated wave will be in the same propagating direction uh, as the incident wave. However, uh, for the interface with the meta structure, the extract uh, momentum k vector is generated here, and uh, the sum of the propagating k vector determines the propagation of the incident wave. This is called the generalized sense law. And in general, meta surface with the uh, narrow antenna can be used to generate different phase, polarization, amplitude, optic angular momentum, and so on. That means the uh, incident electromagnetic wave can be manipulated by specific designed meta surface for various optic applications, such as uh, wave bound correction, imaging, structure, color, sensing, optic communication, and the display. Uh, many applications here. However, to control the layer antenna uh, to generate a uh, different phase for the coverage of the entire 2 pi phase maturation. Uh, in the beginning, people used uh, 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 the layer structure with the V shape, which oscillates in one direction and to the other uh, direction uh, in order to cover uh, uh, pi plus pi. So the two pi. But the advantage of this case is uh, each of these narrow antenna has a different cross section. Therefore, they have a different interaction efficiency, uh, quite differently here. Uh, that means uh, for different wavelengths, uh, resonance uh, has a different efficiency. So, uh, Later on, people are uh, improving use the uh, geometry effect, its so called uh, PP phase, barrier phase effect. Use the uh, similar uh, mirror antenna here by rotating the angle theta, you will have uh, two theta phase different, uh, difference generated here. Uh, the advantage is the uh, uh, size and the uh, shape are the same. So there is the equal uh, uh, amplitude of the physics. Uh, however, uh, the total interaction cross-section for those two cases are quite low because the uh, uh, coverage of the air antenna compared to the uh, total surface area is relatively small. 
So uh, to improve this uh, case, uh, we report in uh, 2012 uh, using this uh, mineral image of the narrow antenna. So for the uh, uh, narrow antenna uh, made of the maple, we have the plasmonic resonance around the uh, narrow antenna in one direction, and then uh, generate the mirror image, which uh, oscillate in different direction. Uh, it's uh, uh, another electric dipole generated cover two phase, two uh, two pi phase. Okay, one is uh, 180 degree, the other one is uh, negative 180 degree. In this way, we generate the magnetic dipole, and uh, also the mirror image will uh, increase the efficiency. But the uh, uh, advantage is uh, it's confined for the refraction mode instead of transmission mode. Okay. So based on this, uh, we uh, uh, study many different meta devices, uh, including the, uh, the application of uh, this uh, gradient uh, data antenna meta surface uh, for beam diffraction and the uh, full color uh, meta hologram and uh, the versatile polarization uh, generation and analysis and also uh, the full color routing uh, using the various uh, normal meta surface. We also demonstrate the epsilon near zero uh, tunable beta surface for uh, beam diffraction application. In this talk, I mainly focus on the design, application, and application of known meta devices such as uh, meta lens and the meta lens array. Uh, so uh, I will talk about a little bit the uh, arctic content chip uh, at the end of this talk. Okay. So uh, let's start. Uh, what is the uh, meta lens and the uh, echometric meta lens? Uh, this is uh, my. Uh, this is the. Uh, sorry. Uh, this is uh, the outline of my talk. Um, so I will uh, first talk about the meta lens. Uh, in our daily life, optic lens uh, can be seen. Uh, everywhere, for example, Canada, mobile phone, iPhone, scope, and so on. For full color image, a uh, wide band working wavelength is needed, and the, the chromatic aberration appears due to the dispersion of the material in nature. Uh, to solve this problem, people normally have to design a complicated lens set uh, to have a really free full color wide band image. This also leads to very complex design and the uh, body system. However, meta lens use the uh, narrow antenna of meta surface to manipulate the light. It is flat optics without spirit aberration. The narrow antenna acts as the secondary light source for the light emission which can be polarization dependent. The polarization image can be easily achieved the advantages are lightweight, compact size, normal function, flat optics, and the CMOS mass production process. In 2015, different layer antenna uh, were used uh, to focus the various wavelengths. They show the combination of different layer antenna at the same focusing position or few discrete wavelengths. Subsequently, for the echometric focusing purpose, three beta surfaces were used for the focusing at the same position. The problem here is the focusing efficiency after going through three uh, beta surfaces is quite low. In, 20, uh, in 2017, the combination of uh, various nail structures uh, can achieve a chromatic beta lens with uh, 60 nanometer batteries in transmission mode. So this is a, a very uh, challenge uh, issue there. Uh, in principle, to realize a chromatic beta lens 
or a community media device in wide range of the frequency is possible. Uh, I will show you our general design principle of meta lens and meta devices. Uh, if we consider the meta surface as a transformative tensor matrix, the output can be calculated with the known input and expected output, the solution of the wavefront transformation is a matrix can be found mathematically. Okay. So with this uh, uh, function of the lens, uh, we basically expect the opposite uh, function. So we know the incident line is in parallel. So uh, the frame wave in parallel incident beam, the focusing spot is known. So we can find out what should be the transformative tensor matrix for the meta lens or meta devices. Uh, in reality, the process for designing meta devices, uh, how to realize the solution of the transmission tensor matrix uh, of these meta devices or meta lens can be very challenging. The purpose of the meta device uh, may have multiple modulation requirements such as amplitude, phase, polarization, orbital angular momentum, high harmonic, nonlinearity, and even quantum entanglement effect, and so on. In case you try to uh, integrate or combine various neural structure to the integrated resonance unit to satisfy all the demanding steps shown here. Uh, optimization is needed at a certain point in order to accomplish practical and useful meta devices with high efficiency and the lower functions such as echometric or uh, chromatic polarization conversion or voltage uh, beam generation, quantum entanglement, nonlinear signal generation, and so on. So, uh, I share with you our general design principle here. No matter what kind of uh, material used for the metal structure, with the uh, known permittivity and the uh, permittivity, epsilon and mu, once we find out the wavelength dependent refraction index and uh, its extinction coefficient n and k here, which is uh, wavelength dependent. Okay. And by using the simulation software such as uh, CST and the console market physics, uh, the transmitting and the reflection spectrum can be found for their structure with uh, known geometry and configuration. All the data collected can form a big data. And this big database for the information on the efficiency phase, polarization, and rating resonance unit is very useful. Subsequently, with the known specification of your meta device. For example, uh, uh, your requirement of your meta device. Uh, then, uh, with uh, imitation, within this limitation of application, that is the physical dimension and the intrinsic parameter of the production, uh, then you can design the CMOS uh, mask or photo mask or EP or, or, or uh, optic mask, then uh, you can have this layout come, come out and uh, generate use for the large area, high precision, uh, grade scale processing and the uh, engraving process or aging process and deposit process and coating process. Finally, you have your devices ready for the measurement and the test, and also for your uh, application of this device. So this is the uh, whole uh, uh, design principle for our meta devices. After sharing our design principle, I would like to share the first case of our uh, continuous uh, broadband and chromatic meta lens in reflection mode by using the concept of uh, integrated resonance unit, uh, differential phase equation, and the edge alignment method.
Uh, in the first case, uh, uh, we show you the focusing with uh, no chromatic aberration over a continuous broadband wavelength from 1200 nanometer to 1680 nanometer in the infrared region. As you can see here, uh, to implement the achromatic maintenance focusing, uh, then the, we use uh, multiple resins uh, antenna to form the integrated resins unit instead of single zero antenna. And uh, uh, also we use uh, PP phase, so-called the barrier phase effect to uh, successfully accomplish the continuous broadband wavelength focus. And so, uh, here shows you the optic image of our lens uh, made and uh, the SEM picture of our lens. Uh, if you zoom in to this, uh, each of these uh, narrow antenna integrated lenses unit, you find that uh, it's a, a gold uh, mirror layer and dimension layer with 60 nanometer and also the 30 nanometer. Uh, there are a kind of made of the gold on the top. And uh, normally it can be uh, one uh, or two or even three uh, there are a kind of, uh, to be integrated as a resonance unit. Okay. And so uh, for this particular case, we have the diameter of the lens is uh, 50 uh, five micro. The focal length is 100 micro. The numeric aperture is uh, 0.268. And the number of antenna feature size is uh, 23 different types, and the total uh, their antenna is uh, 60,000. And the efficiency of this lens is about 31%. Okay. So uh, this uh, lens actually, uh, if you uh, check, there are uh, 23 different features of the their antenna unit used in this broadband information lens. For example, the uh, narrow antenna unit A here, uh, you can find out the size uh, and the, the dimension here. Uh, they have this uh, uh, 10 narrow antenna with 60 nanometer width, uh, 450 nanometer length, and 25 nanometer gap distance which is used for 30 degree phase compensation purpose. For the, uh, for the center, for the edge of the lens, there are 50 different zones with the children narrow antenna unit uh, type and the specific rotating angle for control of the PV phase. So this is a uh, local table and we actually make uh, this kind of lens uh, uh, take advantage of this uh, uh, symmetry, uh, circular symmetry of the lens. So, and also the design principle of our economic analysis is shown here. We use traditional focusing lens, uh, focal, or we use the traditional focal focusing equation for the arctic phase, uh, such as the function of melanin's uh, radius uh, shown here and the wavelengths uh, or the working wavelengths done. We use the uh, differential phase equation. Uh, in this uh, equation, uh, one is for the basic uh, phase control. The other term is for the phase compensation. Uh, we intentionally align the age of the phase function curve of the maxima and the minima wavelengths, okay? And uh, to have the large phase difference in the center of the meta lens. Normally in traditional uh, arctic lens, the curvature uh, is flat in the center and bend it a lot at the edge. But uh, we do it uh, differently in the meta lens. We make the most uh, uh, important uh, structure in the center instead of at the edge because it's very arctic. Okay, so uh, this is a very important and very interesting. So we use the very phase plus the edge alignment method and the integrated resonance unit. We actually can design uh, the 
principle that primary phase control using the very phase by rotating the very antenna angle, we have uh, two uh, C car phase control uh, uh, to cover the two pi phase. And also, we use the integrated resonance unit. Uh, we coupled uh, uh, different uh, antenna together to form an integrated resonance unit in order to make the uh, resonance uh, very broader and also uh, high efficiency. So then we can have the compensation of the phase difference uh, for this kind of uh, uh, different wavelengths. Okay. So in this way, uh, we design our uh, data lens and uh, generate this local table, uh, which has a different uh, integrated resonance unit uh, of the different shape and different size and dimension shown here. Okay. And so uh, this is the uh, experimental result, and this is the simulation uh, uh, of our focusing effect for different wavelengths. Okay. Uh, for the wavelengths of uh, 1200 to the wavelengths of uh, 680 mm. And uh, we also generate, uh, we make a, a different, uh, there are different uh, new numeric aperture lenses, and we find uh, this is all automatic uh, because they are uh, quite even at the focusing spot. And also compare to the, uh, uh, this uh, PP phase only. Uh, meta lens, we had uh, very good results uh, compared to uh, the only PP phase. Uh, uh, it's a chromatic meta lens. Uh, we have very good results uh, compared to that because it's flat here and the focus in uh, spot, but it's not uh, flat. It changes for different wavelengths. So, uh, so for another case, our uh, example I showed to you is uh, to cover the visible spectrum. The previous one is for the infrared uh, vision. Uh, for the uh, 400 nanometer to 670 nanometer uh, wavelength vision to the visible uh, spectrum, we made this uh, uh, aluminum meta lens. Uh, also, similarly, we have the integrated resonance studio looks like this, and also the uh, diameter of the lens shown here, this is our image, is 41 micron, the focal lens is about uh, 163 micron. The very aperture is uh, 0.1 to 4, and uh, the total different uh, narrow antenna feature size is uh, uh, 14 different types. Altogether, the total number of the antenna in one meta lens is uh, 34,000. And the efficiency, uh, the average efficiency is about 26%. Okay. And uh, similarly, we have the different uh, narrow antenna, uh, different integrated resonance shooting from the center to the edge, we took the advantage of the circular symmetry uh, to design this meta lens. And uh, uh, we take this similar uh, design principle using the uh, uh, phase differential uh, equation and the edge alignment method. We uh, intentionally make this uh, uh, phase difference uh, change in the center, and then we make this lens. This is a picture of, uh, of the our uh, 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 This is the uh, performance of our uh, measurement and uh, simulation, and it covers from 400 nanometer to 650 nanometer uh, in the visible range. Uh, if you carefully check uh, from the edge to edge, the narrow antenna in the center is more complicated than the edge. And but actually, each of these narrow antenna they uh, rotate a different uh, angle uh, for different position. Okay, so this is just a uh, single uh, shape of uh, foot from one end to the other end, just to show you uh, how it changes. Okay. Uh, okay, with this in mind, uh, similarly, I will show you how to make our transmission type of automatic meta lens. Uh, those two cases I show you are the reflection type of meta uh, lens. Also, it's automatic because our uh, normal base for design this kind of uh, system. And uh, uh, here shows you the SDN picture of the Guardian Life Automatic Meta Lens. 
which is uh, uh, quite uh, specific. Uh, this is uh, with uh, similar design principle I shared with you previously. We design and fabricate the transmission type of domestic analysis using the Darwin knife. I will tell you why the Darwin knife later. Uh, shown here is the SDN picture and also the zoom in at the different area, A, B, C, and the D, the H here. So you can see the Dell antenna, uh, which is actually different rotation uh, uh, angle for different Dell antenna. The, uh, the height is 800 nanometer, and also the uh, depth of the uh, cavity is also 800 nanometer. So uh, this type of uh, uh, data list is quite similar to the previous one. We have this uh, different uh, dimension for the different narrow antenna and also the cavity uh, in order to cover the two time phase change uh, and also we uh, take the advantage of the circular symmetry to, de de uh, to design this uh, type of data lens. And here it shows you the uh, narrow uh, rod and the narrow cavity for their uh, versions for different wavelengths. And uh, they cover the quite broad uh, coverage of the wavelengths. And also, uh, I would like to mention to you why we use the Guardian Nars. Guardian Nars actually is a very uh, precious material. Uh, However, the price is quite low because uh, uh, for service production electronics uh, uh, company, they make this uh, Guardian Nars uh, wafer uh, for making the LED. So, uh, uh, most of this uh, satellite or the space program, uh, all the semiconductor electronics, uh, they need to uh, be more uh, stable and the strong. So they choose the very nice uh, semiconductor electronics device instead of uh, silicon. Uh, because uh, for the gamma ray, uh, for the, uh, this uh, uh, com uh, comistic uh, ray from the outer space, basically, uh, the lifetime is uh, short uh, uh, in the silicon case, but for Guardian Nitra, it's quite a uh, uh, high index of refraction, it's very strong in physics property, and uh, also the structure is uh, very uh, strong uh, and uh, uh, stable. Most important thing is when we make the lens, people will ask the question uh, when the laser is it to your nano antenna? Uh, will they be melted by the strong laser beam? Okay, so, but uh, if you check the conventional optic lens, they basically, uh, the peak power, they can, uh, uh, they can be, uh, you know, the pressure of the peak power is about the 9.3, 10 to the 11 watt centimeter square. But for Guardian Night Fire, it's 130 millijoule uh, per centimeter square. And for the first uh, of the vertical second, it's a wavelength of 800. So in case it's uh, 20 times uh, stronger, uh, the surface is much higher. So when we make this kind of uh, lens for focus, uh, it has to be very strong. Okay, so this is the reason we use the Guardian pressure. And we use the standard semiconductor electronics uh, mass production uh, fabrication process. So we can uh, mass production our uh, metal lens or metal devices uh, using this kind of uh, system. So, and uh, uh, like I showed you previously, this is our results. And then the, uh, we actually measured uh, these results and we found excellent quality for 400 nanometer. Uh, 660 nanometer meter in the visible wavelengths. Actually, the focus is uh, uh, excellent and also it's achromatic. Okay. So, uh, this result uh, is very important. The reason is uh, uh, we are the first to uh, make this achromatic data lens and uh, show the imaging of the full power image. Because most of the people, they make the data lens and report is for single wavelengths. So for single wavelengths, uh, it's easy to make because the data antenna, uh, you make you only uh, reference for one wavelength. But for
for the full faith, uh, for the full power in it, you need to have a completely different days. And uh, I don't spend much time to talk about uh, all this poverty for the different very efforts there. But we have a very good efficiency and the focusing effect. And also, uh, the resolution uh, shows the stable resolution chart. Uh, just use the wide line uh, uh, source, uh, like uh, the land that we are able to use in our lens. This lens is only 50 miles from the diameter. We are able to resolve the uh, third uh, part of the number seven. That's equivalent to 2.2 micro uh, in this uh, wide line or band, non coherent illuminating uh, phases. So, uh, that means uh, the resolution is almost effectively. So, and uh, we also, uh, also uh, took the uh, movie uh, of this uh, using this lens, and uh, we found uh, uh, very interesting results, and uh, we have a uh, uh, very good uh, cartoon movie shot using our lens, and my student uh, uh, had this. Uh, uh, this is just uh, 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 the CT uh, on the CT wall uh, start for the green side, and you can see the, the outside, the motorcycle, and car moving. Okay, so uh, uh, this is very good uh, and very important. So the meta is considered as the top 10 emerging technology in the World uh, Economic Forum in 2019. And uh, so people expect this uh, scene and the fresh meta lens could be press bulky glass for manipulating light. Okay. And uh, however, uh, uh, I, I have a different point of view. I will show you how to use our sneaking type and prometing meta lens array for light sensing imaging and deposit optics. Okay. Uh, the reason is that uh, I like uh, small. Many people uh, uh, like to make a uh, large diameter meta lens to replace the traditional optic glass lenses. However, uh, for the uh, for the uh, uh, your cellular phone, this lens is uh, very good, excellent lens. Uh, they uh, they are very really inexpensive. Uh, just uh, you know, uh, two dollars or mm, three dollars uh, in total for the whole system. So uh, I don't think uh, we should replace this kind of uh, lenses uh, just because uh, mega lens is new. Okay, I think we should think about the advantages for the small diameter of the mega lens. The reason is clear. I'll tell you here. Okay, for the small uh, lenses, you have uh, uh, large depths of the field. Okay, so if uh, uh, you think about uh, for the energy purpose, the advantage of the uh, large depths of the field uh, can be found uh, in the nature, uh, from the nature creator. Uh, the dark field are so much uh, different uh, for the eyes of the end and the blue, bright, and around the similar uh, size uh, as the uh, mega lens. They all have a uh, large depth of the field for image. Uh, so there are around uh, 80 lenses each side for the eyes of the egg. And uh, egg is uh, for two dimensional uh, motion. And for the full price, uh, they have about 800 lenses each side for the so called the blue flies. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, the, the depth of the field is infinity for meta lens. So, this is very important because, uh, for imaging purpose, a large depth of the field is very uh, much in demand. Okay, so uh, we learned from the nature creator uh, the coencia is so called the killer fly. Uh, there are around 2,300 lenses on each side of the eyes. And Coelsia is three times faster and uh, more sensitive than the full flight here <laughs> because they got more lenses in their eyes. 
uh, they have eight to nine times more energy and the same thing, flame rate than human beings. For the human being, normally we have about uh, 24 to 30 frames per second. Uh, we, it's very difficult for us to catch the uh, Croatia by bare hand. Uh, so, uh, the reason is very simple, we only have two eyes. Okay. And so, uh, we learned from the nature creation that insect has the small and the compound eyes. The advantage are the large depths of the field and high sensitivity of the image. For this reason, we designed and fabricated 60 by 60 broadband and chromatic mirror lens array. The diameter is only 20 micron, and the focal length is 42 micron. So this is quite similar to the uh, uh, inset. Okay, uh, here I show you uh, this uh, uh, lenses already we designed. Okay, uh, uh, this is uh, how it looks like. It's about uh, uh, 1.2 millimeter by 1.2 millimeter area. And we have uh, 3,600 guardian nitride and making the lens and made here. Yeah, this is a SEA picture and to me show the lens uh, is excellent and uh, uh, 20 micron diameter of the lens. And this is a SEA picture shown. Uh, uh, show you the, the highest 800 nanometer for the narrow rod and also 800 nanometer depth for the narrow cavity. Okay? And then, uh, with this type of uh, lens, uh, in total you have about uh, 1.2 million. Uh, sorry, uh, you have about uh, uh, the, sorry, uh, you have about uh, uh, 9,350 data antenna in the whole lens array. Uh, sorry, in one lens array, in one lens, in one meta lens. And in the whole this array, you have about uh, 3.4 million error in China. So compared to the traditional uh, compound lens for the live field imaging uh, 30 or 40 years ago, uh, the, uh, the compound lens is using the molding glass. Uh, the disadvantage uh, for this kind of lens is uh, the defect issue and also the security operation and also uh, uh, this, uh, uh, the whole array has a quite uh, uh, unequal performance normally so it distorts the image instead of collect the uh, three-dimensional formation. So uh, uh, not so much successful due to many problems of the lens array uh, in traditional uh, molding lens. But for our case, uh, it's quite different. Uh, we are flat. We don't have spirit, uh, so, uh, so, uh, we don't have this uh, spirit operation. And uh, we can simply use this lens and put it in front of our uh, collecting lens and then uh, we can have our image ready immediately. And with this uh, kind of, uh, this is using a family camera, uh, uh, put it after, we remove the lens and then uh, put the uh, uh, lens ready in front in your home uh, camera. Then you take this image. And this image actually can show you the uh, uh, very large depths of the field. And, uh, here it shows you the ABC at the different uh, depths uh, of the lens here. And then uh, we, we can immediately uh, find out by compare uh, the, uh, the image uh, to the adjacent image. We can immediately find out the distance of the object. It's a uh, near object or far object. Immediately we can find out. So the disparity can be calculated and we know the pixel size, therefore we know the depth immediately. So here shows you the depth image. Uh, the, this is the photo and this is the depth image. Okay. And the disparity uh, from our uh, uh, live field image can be calculated easily. And here shows you a, a model rocket from Earth to the planet and uh, we have uh, uh, this moving object on the Arctic table, we set up this and we move this uh, rocket. We can have this movie and uh, show and 
basis that the discs or the bullish object. So this is very really important and uh, very easy for this kind of uh, metallic ready. And also for the three-dimensional edge detection is very really important for sensing purpose. So similarly, we find out the, uh, the function and the age of this object. We are able to uh, find out the age immediately of the uh, dielectric energy. And so this is uh, very easy for three different depths, and also we actually can have the age uh, defined and observed immediately. So uh, for the standard resolution chart, we take the uh, right here image of the standard solution chart. Immediately we can have the rendering image showing this uh, edge action and we also show the further improvement of the resolution to the uh, group uh, number 8, uh, the first part. So that's equal to 1.95 micron uh, by this resolution. Uh, under this uh, white line, non coherent illumination. So this is uh, uh, almost a very uh, performance. So uh, this kind of uh, performance makes uh, this moving object to be imaging and sensing easily for the uh, different uh, purpose and also sensing purpose. So finally, uh, I think uh, my talk time is almost there. So I still have eight minutes. I will share with you uh, briefly discuss our new development, Arctic content chip, and the uh, prospect of metal devices. Okay, uh, as we all know, we found that our 60 by 60 Guardian Life Science broadly automatic metal is ready with 33 uh, million data antenna is small and active, highly efficient, with large depths of the field, busy and strong. Low profile configuration, low energy consumption, and the CMOS uh, process to capability uh, for mass production. So, uh, all these uh, uh, important advantages that's, uh, uh, make us think about uh, the important future of uh, this kind of uh, devices. Uh, with the very strong demand of the multiple lens uh, optic system shown on the cellular phone, the advantage of our mechanics are very obvious. Uh, this is uh, the cover page of the IC Police section. Uh, it says uh, the last and the best uh, hope for the standard alone pocket uh, camera. Let's uh, check this uh, state of the art. Okay, there is a uh, many of this lens and it's uh, very uh, funky and heavy. So uh, the weight of this uh, hockey camera is three times uh, heavier than your iPhone. <laughs> so you carry a stone in your pocket. Okay. Uh, uh, so I think uh, we want our metalists to have no more function instead of to compete with the traditional artists. Uh, this normal function which is not available by the traditional optic lenses. And for the new application of the machine vision, uh, AR, VR, and the uh, autonomous, uh, and also robot sense, future drawing, and the B imaging uh, of, of medical purpose uh, inside the body. And so we, we, we think this should be the future. So uh, to show you uh, what we did uh, uh, recently in the CTA, we already made the first metalist uh, uh, job in CTA. Okay, uh, uh, actually flying uh, in Tor, and uh, you can see the picture, and we took the finished uh, picture of this uh, old thing. And uh, by different height, uh, we actually put a piece of the paper on the, uh, on the ground, and we can see the high we can uh, find out our uh, 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 aviation of this uh, drone. And this is uh, our lens, the lens size is quite big, and uh, we, we actually can put uh, together with the single size uh, of this uh, drone. So the, the the advantage is high weight and also uh, 
uh, you know, the uh, consumption of the energy for the drone is uh, very limited. And so, and also uh, people think uh, the meta optics and meta bus, uh, meta devices for the meta bus. This uh, can be easily think about it because uh, you are not as rich as this guy and uh, you won't have uh, all this uh, huge history at home. <laughs> like it. Okay, so uh, uh, in, instead of wearing this heavy and uh, uh, stupid uh, cargo on your head, looks like an uh, insect. Uh, I believe uh, in the future, people uh, will uh, have uh, many wearable or portable devices for the iPhone game, uh, which is uh, here, you know, iPhone, and uh, it can be lighter and heavier uh, to display or to uh, transmit uh, for different reasons. So uh, I think uh, the meta devices is quite important in this case. So uh, uh, I won't talk about too much about this because we are working on this, but I will show you the top 10 learning technology for the 2020, including the AI, 5G, IoT, uh, service computing, and biometrics, uh, and AR, VR, and blockchain, robotics, and uh, uh, natural language processing, and quantum computing. So, uh, I think uh, there are many possibilities for meta lanes to be used for those uh, top 10 emerging technologies uh, shown here. Uh, one of these examples I want to show you is our uh, work uh, published in the science uh, uh, recently. Uh, for the quantum computing, the basic problem which hinders the high dimensional optic quantum entanglement is the decay of the loss of the originality in the Cascade of the quantum entangled light source. Okay, and you ask me why this optic uh, uh, quantum uh, entanglement trick is important. Because you don't want to have this uh, low temperature, you want to have a low temperature, you have to choose the optic chip instead of uh, the atomic chip in the, uh, this uh, 273 degree. <laughs> Uh, uh, C uh, under uh, negative uh, 270 degrees uh, for those uh, quantum effects happen. So the quantum effect happened uh, for photonics in CG, but the problem is uh, uh, the, the, the decay and loss of the uh, originality in the cascade process here, shown here. So uh, it's very uh, highly dependent and the challenge issue. So we made an uh, optic uh, high dimensional quantum entangled chip, which consists of this uh, 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 very thin beryllium borrow, uh, borrow BPO uh, nanometer crystal attached, integrated with our meta lens array. And this meta lens array actually focusing into this uh, BPO crystal to have this uh, down conversion of the photon generated is a down conversion photon pairs, which generate in pair. Okay? And so, uh, this is the optic image of our sample. This is a SEM picture of our sample. This is the optic image of uh, the photon pair generation. And we uh, randomly select uh, the two of them, or three of them, or four of them. We have excellent quantum entangled uh, result uh, is 98%, uh, 96%, and 95%. That means we actually have this uh, uh, mutual quantum entanglement by each of these quantum pair, and also the uh, uh, mutual uh, quantum entanglement of two pair, three pair, and four pair. So this is excellent result and uh, with important meaning. I, uh, I, I, I actually show you, uh, for the conventional uh, computer, you have uh, zero or one, like this code, okay? Zero and one. But for quantum, uh, the quantum qubit is not zero and one, it's multiple state, uh, can be uh, zero to n minus one. So for the qubit, you have uh, uh, all the possibility which is entangled together. Okay, correlated and entangled. However, uh, if you 
consider the pieces of peace and uh, the content peace, they enter the table for many states. But for our work, uh, they enter the table to each other, not just self in table, also visual in table for hundreds and uh, hundreds uh, of the form of dunk uh, version uh, of so the all the possibility is uh, 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 much larger uh, than this uh, sort of uh, intentional case. So uh, I think I hope this will help you to understand because uh, uh, too many slides uh, for this part. So I only choose uh, three of them, but I I, I will show you uh, in the near future uh, how they use for the this uh, uh, quantum. Computing, communication, and uh, uh, quantum uh, optic security, and uh, this is our chief look side. Okay, it's quite small, but we believe for the uh, uh, different uh, the purpose, we will have uh, quantum communication and also quantum computing and uh, quantum detecting and the sensor ready for this kind of optic quantum chip uh, made for this metallic uh, array uh, system. So, to summarize my talk uh, on time, uh, I would like to, uh, uh, you know, uh, remind you of uh, what I talk. I first introduced the uh, meta material, meta surface, meta devices, and also the general design principle uh, of the meta lens or meta devices uh, with the normal uh, new method uh, uh, using the differential phase equation, edge alignment method, integrated resonance unit. Uh, and also, I show you the example of the refraction and transmission type of the uh, information data lens and uh, with a uh, uh, full plane, full color image uh, and the display. And we demonstrate the multi dimensional optic sensing and imaging and also edge detection using our data lens array. And also, our data lens array for high dimensional quantity decoded light source optic chip is shown. So I trust uh, the small and the threat is the beauty and the great advantage for our system. Yeah. Okay. So uh, uh, this is the list of the paper I report this talk. Uh, so our paper shown here. Um, uh, I I hope this talk will help you to understand our work, uh, especially in the CTU. I, I joined the CTU uh, just a few months. So I hope uh, 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 we can have our uh, laboratory soon. <laughs> and then the, uh, you are very welcome uh, to uh, discuss with us. Uh, uh, we are still learning the whole environment uh, in the city. And uh, we look forward to have a uh, close uh, research collaboration with our colleague at the CTU. And thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor, uh, Professor uh, Chai, and uh, it's a very interesting talk. Um, any questions from our audience? Uh, let me, Conway, let me ask you a question first. Um, the, you showed a, a, a page. Uh, you have uh, like a, a matrix multiplied by another matrix. So you have matrix in, matrix out. And that's a transformation. I, I guess this is done by in a analog way, right? So, so this is all done by waves and those. Uh, 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 that's an analog signal processing, right? Yes, yes, you are right. You are right. This, this is just a classical way. Uh, this must be very fast. Uh, but what about accuracy? So you, you, if we do this digitally using electronic devices, and uh, what do you think about the the accuracy? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I think you are right. Uh, basically, uh, if you make uh, electronics uh, like this uh, uh, SRN uh, system, you actually can do a similar thing uh, for this kind of uh, uh, devices. Uh, uh, I, I trust uh, it's possible, just uh, the, the, uh, the limit is how much uh, resolution and uh, how much uh, this uh, pixel you have uh, from the system uh, to do it. 
So uh, you are right. No, no, no problem. Yeah, this is just a, a concept. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions from the audience? Maybe I ask you another question. Um, you have always you, you use meta devices for imaging and uh, etc. Um, then if I can say that uh, you lose the resolution of the images uh, are still a bit low. Is that right? What's the resolution you kind of have? The resolution, oh. yeah. The, the resolution is good. Uh, is uh, as I show you the resolution basically is uh, refraction limit. The problem is the uh, efficiency. Uh, the efficiency of the light collection. Uh, which is related to the interaction cross-section of the mirror and camera uh, on the uh, total surface area. So that's the uh, efficiency. Okay. So uh, for a uh, different uh, system, you actually can, like I mentioned here, okay, you can optimize depends on which one is uh, more important for you. And then you can optimize uh, your system uh, for high efficiency or for different uh, function uh, you choose. So in this way, uh, you can make uh, you know, data devices uh, based on your uh, purpose. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Any any questions? Um, Professor uh, Chin Peng and uh, Uh, let me see. The, the, uh, yeah, please, you can, you can speak. You can um, unmute and uh, you can speak. Okay. Uh, Professor Sai, thank you very much for a very interesting talk. Uh, I'm not in your field, but uh, for your last uh, uh, conclusion, you mentioned that small and the flat is the beauty uh, and the great advantage. But for laser eyes, I mean, for example, the common eyes of insects, maybe I misunderstood, okay? Uh, the, the, the eyes are actually uh, curved, not flat. So maybe I misunderstood your, your flat here. Yes, you are right. Uh, for the insect, they normally have the general curvature of their eyes. And for each eye system, it's also uh, not flat, it's uh, curvature. But uh, for their eye systems, uh, for example, for the full fly shown here, normally they only detect three wavelengths. One for uh, their foot, they, they, they eat the sweet, okay? Uh, so they detect the, uh, the sugar, okay? Uh, one for uh, their energy. They, they actually uh, want to see their enemy. They want to uh, uh, escape. Uh, one for their uh, mate, their wife or husband. <laughs> so, uh, so they only uh, fought for three weapons uh, for their eyes. And also, uh, uh, they have the uh, very uh, wide angle. Uh, so, uh, but for our cases, uh, because our each face is flat, but uh, uh, in the future, we want to learn from them to make this uh, uh, flexible uh, eyes uh, on the uh, sphere. So, but uh, each of the lens is flat, uh, it's good. And okay. each of the lens is uh, okay. more big because we want to see clearly. We, we, we not only worry about our enemy, we not only like our uh, mating uh, process and our food. And we also have a social uh, activity, so we need a more big uh, business. So uh, that's why we want to learn the good things from them, and we want to keep the advantage of our uh, best. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Professor uh, uh Now, Professor Ken, look, um, you can you can uh, unmute and uh, please speak. Hello, uh, very, uh, very nice talk. Uh, I have some questions actually. Uh, regarding your antenna design, 
Uh, I think uh, it's just to adjust the dimension, adjust the dimension to adjust the face. Is, is it possible, for example, to also to adjust the magnitude, the reflection of the magnitude, in order to achieve some other spiritual performance? Uh, this is the first question I want to ask. <laughs> Yes, yes, it's a very good question. Uh, I uh, uh, answer you. Uh, see here, uh, this is a layer in China. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, uh, we want to cover the uh, the not only uh, the very high uh, efficiency and also uh, the face uh, coverage, okay, uh, from uh, zero to two pi, okay. So uh, you you can uh, uh, have the amplitude control and also you can have uh, face control uh, by. Uh, change your narrow antenna shape or geometry size, okay? And, but this case is, is uh, very uh, original because uh, uh, they have the different uh, size and the uh, total interaction cross-section for different narrow antenna, they are different amplitude. So this is a uh, disadvantage for this type of uh, system. And so that's why people use uh, PD face. PD face means uh, the narrow antenna shape and the size is the same. But by rotating the, the narrow antenna direction, then you can find out the face will change according to the rotation uh, angle. It's two times. So it's a uh, very face uh, control. So, but still, uh, uh, the advantage of this is the amplitude of each of these uh, interaction cross section are the same, mm -hmm. okay? Because they are the same uh, interaction cross section uh, of the total surface area. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, even in this case, even in this case, uh, you think about it, uh, the coverage of the neural antenna is always limited uh, compared to the total surface area. Mm -hmm. So uh, you won't be able to have hundred percent efficiency. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, it will be a thin field. <laughs> so, uh, no, no mirror antenna. So that's why uh, people try to improve this case. And that's why I, I mentioned about uh, you, uh, in order to have uh, all this uh, uh, optimization uh, of the incident uh, rise and the output uh, uh, EA way, you have to consider uh, what you want, what you need. and. Uh, uh, What's the uh, limitation of your neural uh, fabrication process? And uh, also the total neural uh, uh, device size. Because uh, if you want to have uh, uh, very uh, efficiency or you have different function, if you want to make it large or you want to make it small, uh, it's all different. So uh, that's why uh, I get the day, uh, because we say too much. Therefore, uh, we worry about too much. But if we think uh, very straightforward for single wavelengths or for one purpose, it can be very easy to, to do it uh, for a single purpose of devices. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, a, a second question is, uh, have you tried to use different kinds of methods uh, in order to, to check which one has better performance? Yes, yes, you are right. Uh, I will only choose these uh, two cases. One is gold. Okay, uh, so uh, in this case, uh, the coverage is uh, from the, uh, the wavelength coverage is, uh, uh, is uh, for infrared, okay, from the 1200 to uh, 1680 nanometer. Mm -hmm. And for aluminum, uh, another case I show you uh, for aluminum, uh, in this in this case, the coverage is for 400 nanometer to 670 nanometer. It's an invisible section. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the material you pick or you choose uh, is very, uh, uh, you know, important. And uh, so, uh, you, you can also mix up uh, uh, the different material uh, if 
do have a uh, photo mask or EV mask, uh, 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 multiple mask, you can actually uh, deposit different material. Uh, to make uh, the, the choosing, the chosen uh, bandwidth or the working wavelengths uh, shift according to what you want. Yeah. So uh, for the medical and for the diabetic, uh, the third one I show you is guardian life is semi uh more like a diabetic killer. So uh, so they are all different. So you can choose different uh, for different purpose in the application. Yeah. I think I oxide or titanium oxide or uh, different material. Yeah. Actually, what's the percentage of energy going inside the metal? Or the major portion of the energy is, is bouncing back and forth between the, the aluminum, the two aluminum layer? Yes, you are right. Uh, for example, in this case, aluminum uh, is very easy to be oxidized. So the efficiency of this kind of uh, layer container uh, compared to the gold, the gold basically uh, has a higher efficiency than this one. So uh, it's uh, 31 percent. So because the dough will not be uh, oxidized easily in this case, so uh, it, it all depends on the material and also the design. Yeah, and we also choose the silicon oxide as a dielectric layer uh, to control the coupling between the layer and cannula on the top and underneath the mirror image. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I will ask you more questions later. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now the next question um, from a uh, solution. Look, uh, please, do you turn on the camera and uh, ask the question? Uh, yeah, uh, can I hear you, Professor Lansai? Yes. Uh, thanks uh, for your very exciting talking. So I want to ask a question. Uh, and you can say the automatic maintenance has a relatively low numerical action. Uh, is there any way to achieve both automatic performance program and automatic performance and a large numerical action? Okay, good. Uh, this is a very good question. Uh, like I mentioned uh, previously, Depends on what you want. Okay, you can always uh, 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 go to what you need. If you want to make a large numeric aperture, and of course you can make a large numeric aperture. Uh, you can design. You choose the right material and uh, the working wavelengths. But uh, it will never uh, be perfect for you. The reason is very simple. The many uh, percent. Uh, for fabrication, for material property, for uh, different reasons. So you, you still have to compromise or optimize your system based on this. So I think uh, uh, no problem. There's no uh, problem for you to choose a large numeric aperture. And I don't see any problem. You can just do it as you wish. Uh, but uh, you have to choose the right material and uh, you have to design the uh, good uh, data structure which is uh, uh, easily for you to make. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, the next question is from uh, Professor Stella Ken. Uh, could you unmute and uh, turn on the camera? Thank you, thank you, Professor Hong Yan. Uh, Professor Tao, you have given a very wonderful talk. Uh, it's very enjoyable. Thank you very much. Uh, I just wonder, uh, you mentioned that there are now all the elements that is ready to be made into different applications, right, by modulating the, 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 the waves. Uh, what is, uh, what is, why is it now, uh, currently, that uh, none of these matter devices and services uh, has, uh, how come they're not already applied in various products? What is uh, what is preventing it from being uh, put into real uh, real products or applications right now? Yeah, okay. This is a very good question. 
That's why so many uh, different universities want to have my students. <laughs> okay. And I think uh, uh, it's a matter of time. Now, uh, many of my students in the uh, in Swiss and uh, in Osang and also in Caltech and Harvard University, in uh, different uh, areas in uh, Japan, they are, are doing uh, this data device dedication design for different purposes. And uh, I don't see the problem, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, if uh, you ask me the problem, uh, I don't have uh, EP in Sabote in EE. <laughs> if you have an EP in Sabote system for me in EE, I can make a lot of samples for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can design and perfect a lot of samples for you. Uh, so I think uh, the facility uh, uh, is uh, 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 easy. Uh, uh, after we learn uh, how to uh, make uh, the sample, we can make a lot of samples for different applications. Yes. So, so, so I mean, uh, not not just in our university uh, departments, but. Uh, Actually, uh, uh, in terms of uh, making it commercial, right? Uh, actually, it's actually available for others to produce it and, and make it in production. What, what is uh, what is holding it back? Uh, okay, yeah. Most of the people they still learning this uh, new method, and uh, uh, that's why I introduced uh, this uh, novel method use the uh, differential phase equation and the edge alignment and the integrated versus unit. Those three are important concepts uh, for you to have a uh, uh, general design tool and also to design the mask. And uh, also, but for the mask production uh, process, I see uh, most of these uh, semiconductor companies, they made it easily because uh, I believe not. It's, uh, uh, five nanometer or three nanometer uh, technology uh, are available. Our well, system uh, is a uh, ten or twenty nanometer uh, system, so it's uh, readily available for us uh, to make this kind of uh, system or uh, make devices uh, for commercial use. That's why uh, in the beginning of the talk, I asked this question. I show you basically uh, the data device drone already. Uh, in the sky of the CPU, so uh, and I don't see any problem. Just uh, I I don't uh, want to make the uh, competition with the traditional optics because uh, this optics is uh, uh, really available and it is expensive, and you don't need to replace this kind of uh, system uh, without uh, much of this uh, 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 you know effort. So mm -hmm. I think we should do uh, uh, this uh, normal function. We should think about the new function of the, our data devices. And also, especially in the metaverse, uh, we can make uh, tremendous uh, 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 support and account for the implementation of the metaverse. Thank you, Professor Tsai. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We also have two questions on the chat. Uh, let me let me read them. Uh, the first question is: What are the limitations of Meta Surface? Oh, okay. Uh, the limitation is always there, like I mentioned here. Okay, if you want to make something come out for you, you have to choose the uh, right material, and you have to come out uh, this uh, very. Uh, uh, optimization of uh, the function, uh, in the requirement from your function. So you can use this uh, uh, general principle design rule uh, to achieve what you want. So the limitation, uh, for example, comes come from the fabrication, uh, the critical dimension of your fabrication system, uh, so-called, uh, like I mentioned, uh, now the semiconductor electronics company in the Korea and uh, uh, in Taiwan, they train the 3 nanometer or 5 nanometer uh, critical dimension. And also, this is a limitation. And also, uh, you, you, you always have to choose the right material uh, for the uh, permeability and the productivity. So, here, in order to have this uh, 
a very available for you uh, for your working with this on your daily basis. Yeah. So, uh, this is an indication. Very interesting species. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we have another question on the chat. Uh, the second question is, what is the bottleneck of metal surface for wide applications, such as replication or design? Okay, yeah. Uh, like in my talk, I don't see uh, the bottleneck. Uh, the bottleneck uh, is, uh, uh, I think, uh, you, you need a good environment uh, to implement uh, all your design and the fabrication. Uh, that's the third bottleneck. And also the pandemic, uh, uh, we cannot travel. <laughs> we cannot uh, uh, communicate with people. And uh, uh, I, mean, I think that's the bottleneck. And uh, uh, other, other than that, uh, all the education comes from physics. Uh, not uh, too much uh, to say about it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Scott. Um, any other questions? Uh, if not, I'd like to thank Dr. Scott for the very interesting talk, very inspiring talk today. And, uh, um, sorry, sorry, <laughs> we have one more question. <laughs> one more question just came on the chat. What roles of mathematical, uh, of meta material plays for quantum, quantum optics? Oh, this is excellent. <laughs> okay, uh, I think, uh, uh, this picture will show you, uh, the, uh, the future of the high dimensional quantum optic chip is very important. The reason is they can have this uh, correlated entanglement states uh, within one single chip at room temperature, not this uh, liquid nitrogen or liquid helium temperature. Okay? And it can be portable, wearable, or even inflammable to your body. So I think uh, this kind of uh, system will have a huge impact uh, very quickly. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, people uh, expected uh, for this uh, direction. And uh, the good prospect in this uh, direction, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Um, any other questions? If not, let's thank Professor Shai for the wonderful lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, in the series, we have two more talks on electronics and photonics. Uh, one will be given by Professor Michael Day on 12th of April, and uh, another one given by Professor Chi on 22nd of April. Uh, you will be welcome to attend those uh, uh, lectures. So I'd like also to thank all the attendees for coming to this lecture. Thank you very much.